Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Charm City Sideline Podcast. I'm here with Brad, Dawson, and myself, Zach. And today, we're going to be talking about the offseason, what's happened so far, just in the tampering period. Tomorrow, actually, is the first day of real signing. But to today and yesterday was all the legal tampering, where we found out stuff like Derrick Henry being a Raven, a couple of big players from... Our team last season signing away to some rivals. It's been intense, but today I want to start out talking about the main headline for our Ravens so far, Mr. Derek. Did he freeze for you, Dawson? He did. All right, so we're talking about Derek Henry today. Um, Ravens signed him to a two-year deal, $16 million up to $20 million. Um, Dawson, what were your initial thoughts on the whole running back market as free agency kind of shaped out? Dude, so like this market was getting talked about for weeks leading up to this free agency period. And uh, everybody knew that, you know, it was star studded. There's a lot of really good running backs that were featured. And man, I did not expect them to fly off the board in the capacity that they did so quickly. I mean, you were, we were literally hours after the noon negotiation period opened up, you know, and just running backs off the board so fast. I mean, I think DeAndre Swift literally got signed in 10 minutes. Like yeah. it was pretty crazy. And, uh, you know, it, it was a little scary because we were sitting there. And of course, we knew the Ravens were targeting running backs. Um, however, you know, there was no move made immediately. So it was a little scary to think about just because of how fast they were flying off the board. And, uh, you know, right in the end, the Ravens, you know, were patient and got their guy that they wanted all along. And uh, super stoked about it. But, man, those running backs flew off the board. And, I mean, if you're a team right now that needs a running back, uh, good luck. You know, it, it's going to be tough because they're pretty much all gone. I mean, we took kind of the last cream of the crop. And, uh, man, I am super pumped for this edition because, holy hell, dude, this makes the Ravens team so much better. Yeah, it's really interesting how I keep seeing reporters, insiders talking about the draft class and how it's affecting free agency. So this running back draft class is really, really weak. And you saw all the free agents go off the board right away. And then the receiver class is really, really good. And no one is signing anyone. Like Evans got the extension before free agency and no one else, nothing else has happened. Um, So that happened. Um, Yeah. Swift was off so early and then Pollard went down um, to Titans, which that was really interesting because completely different switch up from Henry to Pollard, really, really different backs. Um, Yeah. yeah, So, and then obviously the Saquon thing, I think we wanted Saquon uh, a little bit more than Derrick Henry, maybe. Do you agree with me there? Um, Yeah. I mean, I, I've been reading a lot of, you know, before we even signed uh, Derrick Henry, I was reading a lot and it really seemed like Derrick Henry was their target all along. I mean, obviously we targeted him before the deadline last season. Uh, very heavily, but, you know, Titans ownership in the last minute kind of were like, no, we're not getting rid of him, uh, you know, but it, obviously, you know, he was our target all along. And, you know, I completely agree with that because I think he's honestly the best running back that was available that fits this Ravens team to a T. Like he's literally the definition of playing like a Raven. And uh, he's just going to add such an elite aspect to this team, you know, at their position that we haven't had, I think, really. Uh, not to overlook Mark Ingram because, you know, he had a really good, I think, 2019 it was with us. Um, yeah. I might be wrong. But I, I don't think we've had a really good running back like this since, honestly, like Justin Forsett. So it's going to be really fun to see. Um, I'm obviously super pumped. But I think that, you know, obviously Saquon Barkley would have been cool. Um, however, he got a lot of money. And I don't quite think the Ravens are interested in him from just what I've seen. I haven't seen them linked to him at all in any of these reports. It really seemed like it was kind of Phil- Philadelphia or Houston possibly. Um, but, of course, in the end, he goes to Philadelphia. He joins his rival. And, um, you know, it, it's very interesting. A lot of these, you know, additions by these teams are going to shake up their divisions and even their teams uh, quite a bit. You know, you got Saquon to Philly, and, I mean, that's that's a great combo there. I think that's amazing. And, of course, you got Henry to Baltimore. And I even, you know, not to get off track, but I even really like the Joe Mixon to Texans edition. I think that's yeah, going to be a really yeah, good yeah. fit. I think that's going to be a really good fit there in Houston for them. So it's going to be interesting to see, and I'm curious to see uh, what the Ravens' next step is in free agency because – Honestly, you know, they don't they don't have a ton of holes. You know, we don't got a ton of really big vacancies. So I'm very curious to see who they go off and target next. So, guys, I don't know if you guys really said any stats, but I just wanted to share a no. few. The most rushing yards of any player in the NFL since 2018 is Mr. Derrick Henry. He has 8,268. That's just for one, you know, and pair him with the best dual threat quarterback. 
of all time, possibly. Mm-hmm. Are we willing to go? I was okay. waiting for you to say that. Just saying. I was waiting for you to say that. That's, you know, nothing. That's nothing, right? Real Derek quick, Henry did is... you guys see the meme of the uh, read option? Read yes. option Madden Oh, my play. God, yes. Yes, yes. But him, and we'll mention Keaton Mitchell here in a second. I don't know if you guys touched on yeah. it, but at least we'll we'll get into him and how he's going to be affected from this. But Derrick Henry's run for at least 1,000 yards in five of his last six seasons, and the one where he didn't get it, he was only playing eight games that year. Yeah. So, I mean, this guy is just him. So – now to go towards our lightning to Derrick Henry's thunder, Keaton Mitchell. I'm so excited to see this. Like Keaton Mitchell, we're also going to see him probably later in the year, sadly. But how in the world do you guys think this elevates his game to another level? It's it's going to be interesting because, yeah, like you said, Keaton Mitchell got injured in November, I believe. Um, ACL injuries, normally 9 to 12 months. I would hope – that the Ravens just choose to not let him rush back. Like, wait till he's literally 100%. Um, actually, you're not going to be 100% the year after an ACL, but wait till he's, like, full go. Like, I'd give him a year. Around Thanksgiving, maybe, I think, is a time period that they should bring him back. Um, I like that. But, yeah, I think when you when you look at what Gus and JK were, this is, like, if Keaton is able to make a full recovery, this is, like, that on steroids. Um, Derrick Henry being Gus and Keaton Mitchell being – J.K. Dobbins, it's just the thunder and the lightning. Like, if it's a big if Keaton Mitchell is fully healthy next year and able to be, you know, full go in December and in the playoffs, this is probably the best running back duo. And to say something real quick, Dawson, sorry. You're fine. Last podcast that we were looking, hopefully that this move was going to be made, we had said that Gus Edwards, this would be a replacement for Gus Edwards for Derrick Henry. This is an upgrade, people. An upgrade that we can't yeah. even comprehend at the moment because we haven't seen him play in this offense, which is going to be the most fun thing in football. But, Dawson, what do you think about Keaton Mitchell here and his next step with Derrick Henry in the backfield? Yeah, man. I mean, no shade whatsoever to J.K. and Gus. I mean, we both – we all love those guys to death. I mean, they both yes. mean so much to this organization. And uh, it really sucks to see Gus – Edwards leave, man, because what a story, you know. But uh, anyways, I really think this uh, duo of Keaton Mitchell and Derrick Henry is a thunder and lightning combo to a T. Like, I mean, this is quite literally one of the best backfields in the league, if you ask me. And it's like, obviously, I'm going to be a little biased. But, I mean, you quite literally have a top three running back in the NFL joining force in Baltimore with the best mobile quarterback of all time. And, yes, I said of all time. Ooh. with. A guy in Keaton Mitchell who, yes, was an undrafted free agent in his first season, but looked amazing. I mean, the dude literally came out of nowhere and was like the hot topic and the guy to see around the NFL. And, uh, you know, he sustained a a very unfortunate injury, of course. And, you know, we're probably not going to be able to see him for quite some time this upcoming season. But uh, I think that's a good thing for the Ravens to do is not rush him back because there's no need to now after signing the King Henry. Um, but I think once you both get them on the field together and healthy um, in Keaton's aspect, I think it's just going to be an absolute nightmare for defenses to defend against. I mean, if you're a defense looking at, you know, this offense across the field from you, you got Lamar Jackson lined up in shotgun with Derrick Henry standing next to him and possibly Keaton Mitchell. And then if you look out wide, you got Zay Flowers. And it's just like there's no logical explanation of uh, explanation, I'm sorry, of how to attack this. And it's just going to be an absolute nightmare for teams to oppose. And, man, when you have a one-two punch like Derrick Henry and Keaton Mitchell, who both bring completely different things to the ball field, um, you know, at the running back position, you got the guy who will just absolutely run you over in Derrick Henry and just tote the rock for the entire game and just absolutely wear down opposing defenses. And then you got a guy like Keaton Mitchell who can come off – the sideline, you know, not that he's not going to start or have meaningful reps, but late in the game and just completely outrun you. And it's just like so elusive and stuff. So it's really just a, a great ratio of what the Ravens are going to build at the running back position. And I'm so pumped to see it, dude, because I don't think people realize what the Ravens just added to their team today. I mean, you added an all pro first ballot Hall of Fame running back who I think is still very much um, has good years ahead of him because people can say he's washed all they want and, you know, had a down year. However, if running for 1,200 yards with 12-plus touchdowns is a down year, then sign me up every day of the week. And, you know, the Titans' offensive line is, no offense, but horrible. So sign me up, man, and I am, oh, my God, I'm through the roof with the signing. And I was at work today when I got the notification, dude, and I I, I didn't know what to do. So it was, I mean, we all kind of knew it was coming, but, man, to actually see it, 
become official, dude, was just absolutely amazing. Yeah, there were so many moves that happened before it that it's like it was dominoes, really. Like every single mm -hmm. one was okay, we're closer, like we're closer, we're closer. And originally there was a number before where we had offered him, I think, six, six and a half six and million. A half. Yeah. And so I wouldn't expect him to take that. I heard that the Cowboys had kind of lowballed him. Um, there's just a bunch of rumors about it. So it came down to us and a few other suitors. But if you had told me Monday afternoon that we'd get him tomorrow, I'd be happy. But knowing what's all happened these last two days, it's just been so much fun as an NFL fan, but also just it was perfect timing for us because we knew what the market was, how it ended. And I'm just super pumped to see that. Um, next up, we want to talk about our star defensive tackle reaching an agreement just on March 8th, four years, 98 million. And this is just a side note because I want to applaud Derek DaCosta real quick. Christian Wilkins, who's the Dolphins defensive tackle star from last year, he signed with the Raiders four years, 110 million. So, like, DaCosta got right in the window, getting a cheaper deal, knowing the number would grow as soon as the offseason hit. Guys, what do we think about this? Brad, what do you think about Matt BK getting locked down for the next four years? Man, it is nice that we finally were able to retain that guy who blows up in his final year of his rookie deal. I think there's been so many guys that have gotten away. Um, you know, Zadarius Smith, Matt Judon, all those guys. Um, especially on the D line and the edge rushers that have just gotten away from us. And this one worked out. Uh, I think it's surprising that they got the deal on so quickly after the tag. It kind of seemed like it would end up being uh, one of these rough situations that uh, maybe they don't even get an extension done, which would have been really, really tough because he would have played on what, like 20 something million dollars of a cap hit this year. And uh, Matt BK. I mean, he is one of the best interior D linemen in the league. He might be – okay, there's Aaron Donald, but I'd say besides Aaron Donald, he's the best interior pass rusher in the league um, for, what, $24 million a year. I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, 13 sacks last year, which is, like, up there with, you know, the big edge rusher guys. Um, yeah. So I'm really loving it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just the perks of having a fantastic GM in Nair Tacosta, and especially a guy who sat under another fantastic GM for, I mean, countless amount, many of years with Ozzie Newsome. And it's like, obviously, he learned the tricks of the trade. And uh, this just goes to show you that he, you know, full trust in EDC, man. He knows what he's doing. He got on this deal immediately after the tag. And, uh, I mean, all along, he knew that he was going to get the deal done. I mean, or else they wouldn't have franchise tagged him and risked having him play for $22.1 million. And, uh, you know, how quickly they got it done after the deal just shows you that, the confidence that he had in himself to get this deal yeah. done with Justin. And, uh, man, what a steal, dude. Honestly, for one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL, especially a guy who can rush the passer. I mean, what interior D lineman do you see nowadays get 13 sacks from the interior? Like that is just on. It's literally of, like Aaron Donald and maybe not even that him. is. Yeah. Aaron Donald. I think this season had like eight sacks, dude. Yeah. So I, it's just, you know, breakout year or not, dude, Justin Matabike is a phenomenal player. He's a, you know, he's a key piece to this defense for the next countless many of years, along with Roquan and Kyle Hamilton, man. And I'm so excited. And as a Ravens fan, you know, as Ravens fans, we should all just be absolutely pumped and uh great GM, great signing, great player. And it was a match made to have it. And I'm so glad he's staying because like Brad said, it would have absolutely sucked to see him leave after a breakout season and go somewhere else and just be absolutely dominant for years to come. But luckily we got him and uh, we roll. Yeah, just real quick. I just checked Aaron Donald's. In 2018, he had 20 and a half stacks. But besides that year, the most he ever had was 13 and a half. So pretty, pretty good year for Justin Matavik. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw a stat too. I think he was top three in quarterback hits. And the rest of the people on that list were all you know, premier edge rushers, TJ Watt, yeah, Michael Parsons, easy. Max Crosby. It's like, this guy is seriously, at least last year, he was just on another level that we hadn't seen at the defensive tackle position. And I'm going to be this guy. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm, I'm going to be this guy. I'm going to rain on the parade a little bit. Now it okay. is one year of this elite play from Matt yeah. So a long-term contract, whenever I saw it happen, I'm super happy. I'm pumped. But then I'm like... 
it's hard to pay, you know, a, a, a star player after one season, you know, the big bucks. Whenever you've only really seen an incline up until this point, you don't know if it's going to stay that way. You don't know if it's going to be stable. So I don't know. It, it, obviously, I'm happy for him. I'm so glad that he's going to be a Raven for a long time. But I'm going to, I'm really going to put the pressure on Matt BK to deliver again. That's what I'm looking forward to. I mean, you're absolutely correct. You commit $98 million to a player after, hate to say it, but one really good season. I mean, his story has been amazing, man. He was drafted as a mid-round talent out of Texas A&M, and it was kind of just one of those things when the Ravens drafted him, like, oh, hopefully this guy can turn out to be something because, yes, he was good in college. However, he wasn't like a premier prospect. You know, he was raw. He had to be developed. And uh, luckily it looks like Baltimore did that in a really good way. Um, however, Zach is 100% right with, you know, He's got to perform. And I, I have, of course, all the faith in the world that he's going to be. And he's that next great interior D lineman. And obviously the Ravens do too, or else they would have not committed what they just did to him. Um, but absolutely the pressure's on. I mean, I'm going to speak for everyone watching this and any Ravens fan in the world. Do not expect him to get 13 sacks again, because that's not going to happen. If he does, that is absolutely insane. And he'll have the Hall of Fame trajectory in year six or whatever. But do not expect 13 sacks. Just expect the consistent pressure, the dominance that he brings, the double teams that he requires and stuff. Just expect just the pure force that he brings. Do not expect his numbers to look the way they did. Because that's just part of the game. That's what happens. But, you know, especially being an interior D lineman, I mean, that is damn near impossible to do, you know, especially on a consistent basis. So I'm not expecting any crazy numbers, you know, from him next season. But I am expecting him to be an absolute force to be reckoned with on the interior like, you know, he was. And uh, I'm super excited to see where his career goes, man. And hopefully he's here for the long term, even, you know, after this contract, hopefully he's here forever yeah. and he turns into, you know, a hall of fame type player because that'd be absolutely phenomenal. That That's such a good point. Austin. Thank you for at least mentioning that. Yeah. And to bring us to, it's not the biggest signing ever, but the last signing from the Ravens so far in the tampering period, bringing back Malik Harrison on a one-year deal, stud and middle linebacker. I mean, I'm glad to have him back. Um, Dawson, what do you think about it initially? Yeah, I mean, it's of course it's not a glamour, you know, glamorous signing by any means. It's not like yeah. the old crap here we go signing. But Malik Harrison's an awesome dude. He's a great player. Um, he can play inside, outside linebacker. He provides a lot of early down plays that he's really good at that people don't really see. Um, he's more of that guy that you know makes the impact under the lines that you don't see. And uh, obviously, he's not the guy sacking the quarterback every play, making a tackle. But he does a lot more than people think. And uh, you know, bringing him back on a smaller deal is only thing that can come out of that is a good thing for the Ravens. You know, we know what we're getting out of him, and uh, obviously we drafted him stuff, and he's always been here. But, uh, you know, great special teams guy as well. He's a very significant piece of our special teams, and, of course, we know the Ravens. They love their special teams players uh, more than any team ever, which is fine. It's not a bad thing. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a good deal. You know, there's not much to it, but for sure I'm, I'm happy with it because, you know, losing a special teams guy in Devin Duvernay. However, I know they don't play the same role on special teams, but, it's always good to lock up a guy who, you know, is a lot more important than people see or think. So right now we actually have a question here from Evan. Evan asks if we should sign a wide receiver or draft one or even get another wide receiver. Evan, I think we're going to get one. It's just whether it is signing or dra drafting it. Brad, what do you think initially about drafting maybe even early off or if there's anyone that's catching your eye so far in free agency? Yeah, so first off with free agency, you got Calvin Ridley, Hollywood, two guys that are available. Um, there's I got a friend who's a Chiefs fan who's sending me some Hollywood stuff. I think there's some rumors going on there. I saw there. that too, yeah. That'd be pretty unfortunate. Um, Calvin, I, would, I, I think I'd rather sign Hollywood than Calvin Ridley, honestly, but I doubt we're going to sign either of them. I think Derrick Henry is sort of our quote-unquote big signing in this free agency period. Um Draft-wise, we, we talked about this last episode kind we of did? in a funny way because we took Hollywood and then Bateman and then Flowers in three out of four years. But it's kind of like, do we take another receiver? Like, do we just load up, take a Donnie Mitchell or Xavier Worthy or Ladd McConkey? There's so many guys that could be late first-rounders this year. Um, and it like I said this last time, but if you have two elite receivers on rookie deals – it's kind of like a cheap cheat code. It's almost like having a quarterback on a rookie deal. Um, just a quick comment here. Tyler Boyd or Michael Thomas? Uh, neither. Um, <laughs> yeah, neither. 
I would rather have Tyler Boyd than Michael Thomas, to be honest. I think Tyler Boyd would be a decent possession guy, honestly. I think that'd be an okay signing. Michael Thomas, no thanks. Um, Keon Coleman, I think, would also be a very interesting draft pick. I, I like him a lot. I think the 40 yard dash, 4 6 1, is going to push him down the boards a little bit, but. I think he could be. I think it's one of those guys where the combine doesn't, doesn't end up mattering for him. Kyle Hamilton ran a really slow forty and fell to fourteen, and now he's the best safety in the NFL. So, yeah, yeah, and I yeah, got this, you. About this the free agent but. market um, for the wide receivers is not really that appetizing, to be honest with you. And I don't think there's any guy in there that the Ravens are, you know, hammering the table for. I don't think there's a guy in there that they're a hundred percent like, okay, we need to go get this guy. We need to see what it takes to bring him here. Um, the only ones I can think of really that would make any sort of impact on this team, like Brad said, would be Calvin Ridley or Hollywood Brown. And I honestly don't see either of those guys even being entertained by the Ravens. Um, Obviously, what do I know? I could be completely wrong. However, I don't see them pushing the buttons for those guys. And uh, this draft class is just absolutely stacked from top to bottom with wide receivers. And that's all draft analysts and stuff have been saying all offseason long is this is the class for wide receivers. And that's why you haven't really seen any wide receivers go in this free agency. That's why those top guys are still there after, you know, two days of negotiating. And uh, it's just because the draft is – so expensive with these wide receivers and it's so much cheaper like brad mentioned to have a good receiver on a rookie deal rather than paying them 15 million dollars because that's what the market is nowadays and um i absolutely i believe the ravens are going to target another receiver i mean the only receiver we have on under contract after next season i believe is zay flowers so you absolutely have to draft a receiver um or just make a push for any receiver whether that's trade or sign um obviously we love zay flowers bateman is still unproven as much as we like him and, uh, you know, Nelson Aguilar is just a wide receiver three or four back on a one-year deal, I believe it was. So, mm-hmm. I mean, absolutely, Ravens are going to target a receiver. Um, I think it just depends on what trajectory they go now in free agency, which I believe, if I had to guess, would be bringing some of their own guys back. Um, I believe now they should probably start talking to guys like Jadevian Clowney or Kyle Vinoy, um, possibly even Kevin Zeitler if they can bring him back, but I don't know. I think that should possibly have sailed already. Um, but I think now, obviously, the big ticket – free agent Derrick Henry, the Ravens ultimately have to switch their focus to the offensive line, cornerback, or bring it back their own guys, which no matter how they go with any of those routes, I would like. Uh, but I, I do think that bringing their own guys now is going to be their focus. Since we got Derrick Henry, my focus has been towards the O-line, but wide receivers are going to be there. I feel like any of those rounds we can get a guy, but like I don't think in our time really any late wide receiver has been super productive for us. And – that kind of scares me. So I'm hoping that we target a wide receiver early just because our offense would continue to blossom with so many weapons. But, man, do I want to make Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson and their show as efficient as possible and get a good O-lineman. So that's what I've been just thinking draft-wise. Um, it, it, it really has me debating with myself because – there is so many guys like we just talked about in the O-line. There's plenty of veteran guys that I feel like would want to come play for us and maybe on cheaper deals. Maybe Zeitler comes back on a really cheap one year, something something like that. I, I think there's good enough names out there, even though guards have been getting paid fat stacks so far. Robert, huh? it's, it's, about 20 it's, million. A lot of it's incredible. Here. So I, it, it all depends on the market for him and uh, what we're really seeing in the draft. It could be even – post draft where we get a legitimate lineman or at least a veteran to come play for us or along with a wide receiver someone like tyler boyd we could just keep the theme going with division rivals just going all over the place for Let's real do it. Bro. hey why not maybe for real play. let us get why one, not dude. why not so <laughs> my head's been spinning with those so um, yeah andrew voy he's here ben cleveland a, a couple of guys um that we could entertain for a guard spot um but I'm not really ready to push the chips in. Are you guys really ready to do that? I would say no. my opinion on it is – so we, we basically have two openings at guard, right? I think Voorhees and Cleveland, let them battle it out for one spot and get a surefire guy at the other spot. I think that's how I would do it. I, I, like I, I don't know if I would do Cleveland and Voorhees. I think that would be a little no. risky. Let them battle it out. Best man wins. The other one be a very solid seventh man because of Makari. But, um, yeah, let's get at least one surefire guard. Yeah, I agree with Brad. I don't think we should go into the offseason and, uh, you know, 
we're already in the offseason, but I don't think we should just kind of, oh, we need both guards, especially bringing in a star running back in Derrick Henry. It's like you need some consistency there, and you're going to need a great offensive line to, of course, com- accommodate this duo that you're bringing in um, with Lamar and Derrick Henry. Like you're going to need to maximize your potential through the roof. And um, I was going to say before you guys beat me to it that I do really like Andrew Voorhees, honestly. Yeah. And uh, Ben Cleveland looked really good at right guard to end last season. Um, in a few games. So I, I do think the Ravens have a pretty good ounce of confidence in those guys to at least take over one spot. Um, you know, of course, Andrew Voorhees hasn't played a snap in the NFL yet, hasn't even taken a practice or anything because of the unfortunate injury at the Combine last season. But he was a really good prospect, and uh, he was a really good guard at USC, and I think they have confidence, and that's why they took a flyer on him because nobody else would. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But I believe somebody just said the names of Dalton Rissner, and I believe I said that in the last pod, and you guys. Oh, really? We're unsure of it, but I would possibly like to um, entertain the thought of signing Dalton Rissner because he actually is a good guard. Um, I don't believe he played last season. I don't know if it was due to an injury or something, um, but he ha- he has a pretty good track record of being a pretty reliable guard, I believe. So, you know, maybe they take a flyer on him. Maybe he would be looking to sign for the cheap uh, just because, you know, he hasn't had an opportunity in a while. Uh, we'll see, but, I, I you know, wow. these guards okay. are going for so much money, like Zach mentioned a few minutes ago, man. These guards are just – flying off the radar for so much money and big I get numbers it. yeah i totally get it because it's a very important position but that's i know that's not going to be in the ravens interest um paying out that money so we'll see what happens but i think you know it all depends on what the ravens do in these next couple of weeks in free agency in the way they're going to go attack the draft because obviously if they sign a receiver i don't see the first pick being a receiver vice versa if it's first you know if we sign a you know a good guard or something i don't see us attacking the offensive line round one. It really just depends. And we know the Ravens live off the best player available philosophy when it comes to draft. So who knows? Maybe we draft a freaking linebacker round one. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, speaking of linebackers, we heard some kind of crappy news today. Mm-hmm. Um, Derrick Henry news came out and we're all like on a high. And then yep. turn around, and then Patrick Queen has signed with the Steelers. I was furious. I was heartbroken. I mean, he could have gone anywhere. But, oh, my gosh. All this all this talk today about, oh, they've got a gritty guy. I know we're going to dog on him here. I know you guys are going to be a little negative. I, I think I am, too. Maybe not. Maybe positive. <laughs> but there a bunch of Ravens fans turned from loving him and don't care where he signs to oh he just signed with the division rival let's all throw his name to the fire burn his jersey i mean crazy stuff brad what do you think about it okay first off I'll, like it's the same thing as saquon barkley going to the eagles the giants didn't want him back and the giants fans are burning his jersey like you need to chill out the, these teams are not loyal to their players, so why should the players be loyal to the teams? I am not extremely happy with Patrick Queen's decision. There's no way that wasn't his best contract offer. That was definitely the most money he was offered. Um, so it's like I'm not really mad at him. Like I don't like him any less i would say like he was it just sucks because he was like my second favorite player on the ravens behind lamar and now i mean i'm gonna be hoping derrick henry trucks him um but like as a person like i'm not mad at him i'm not gonna burn a jersey like i have no problem with taking the most amount of money you can have and also this raven steelers rivalry like as sad as it is as it is to say it's not even close to what it used to be this happened in 2011, it would be like, yeah, I think even the media would be hating on him. But yeah. now it's like, it's not really that great of a rivalry anymore. If anything, we have a bigger rivalry with the Bengals. So, yeah, I don't know. And also one more quick thing. I do think it's really, really interesting that Mike McDonald didn't want Patrick Queen. I think that might say something. Obviously, Mike McDonald is a lot smarter than us. Um, but I think, I think that's interesting. Yeah, I think Brad kind of hit it on the head right there pretty perfect. Like, I'm not going to diss on the guy, dude. He got his bag. He deserves it. Like, obviously, we knew. It's his first big contract in the NFL. Of course, he's going to go out and freaking chase the money. Like, he deserves it, man. He's an all-pro linebacker, and I love Queen to death, bro. I'm still going to like the guys, even though it's going to be hard to root for him, uh, you know, across enemy lines. 
Uh, but like, he's literally like my top five, like in my top five favorite Ravens. And I, I love the guy, dude. I've met him a couple of times and he was super nice and genuine and he's just a great player. He's a great dude. I loved him when we drafted him, but it's like, dude, I'm not going to sit here and burn his Jersey or hate the guy or disrespect him. I'm not going to sit here and try to, you know, say, tell myself that he's terrible. It's like, if he signed back, we'd be like, we locked up an all pro linebacker. Let's go. So it's like, don't switch up so fast, people. Like, don't try to sit here and convince yourself that he's not good because he's a very good linebacker and Pittsburgh just got a really good player. So don't try to sit here and bash on him because he's a great linebacker. And we all know that. Uh, but I do like the thing Brad said right there at the end. It is very surprising because I thought 100% Patrick Queen was following Mike McDonald. And I really thought Geno Stone was going to as well. Uh, because they have like no safety or linebackers right now. And of course, we know the whole Mike McDonald story. Um, so, may, you know, maybe that is something that, you know, we don't know. Maybe that is something that Mike McDonald sees and we don't. Um, but I'm not going to bet on that. Of course, you know, it's probably just at the end of the day, Seattle's front office, not wanting to pay what they did. Um, one last thing though, is I will say, I was very surprised because I thought Patrick queen was going to land a bigger contract. Yeah. Um, I was pretty surprised to see he only landed $13 million a year, which is obviously a nice contract, but yeah. you know, I, for what he's become, like, I, I thought he was going to get absolute bag, but like, like 18, 17, a hundred percent. Like, and I don't honestly, like the Ravens could have potentially got him back, you know, at that price, who knows, but, uh, you know, happy for him. Great dude, great player. And it's going to be, it's gonna be tough seeing him across enemy lines, but you know, this, like you guys were saying, like Brad said, it's not the same rivalry. So it's not like he's going over saying F you to Baltimore. Like it's, it's just, it's a very respectful rivalry. There's a lot of respect between those coaches, the players, the team, like, you know, everything. So, you know, it's not, any disrespect towards the Ravens on his part. It's just simply getting his bag, getting the money he deserves. And just to put a cap on that, Queen had offers, I guess, from the Texans and Panthers. Texans was reportedly around 10 million and Panthers number wasn't really said, but it was honestly, any report was kind of much more than the Steelers one. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it could just be, you know, a winning organization, <laughs> but I mean, I don't, uh, blame him for not wanting to go to the Panthers, I guess. But yeah, I Correct. think the Seahawks one's a great point. Uh, yeah, we got a question here from Wrong Siren. Would you cut Stanley post June first and replace him with a Tyron Smith or Charles Leno? Um, I'm a big Ronnie Stanley guy. Um, I know a lot of hate has happened this last, uh, basically season, and a little more, but. I'm okay with keeping him. I know I believe there's a pretty good amount of cap that we can get if we do, but wouldn't it just go right back into one of those tackles? I'm, I don't, I don't think it's worth it. Dawson, what do you think? I mean, I, I pretty much agree with you. I mean, if you cut Ronnie Stanley, you're just going to replace him with, you know, if it's one of those two guys, it's you're pretty much throwing it right back at another guy who there's no familiarity with. And it's like, you're probably going to get the same amount of production from him, to be honest. Like, I don't see like, Tyron Smith or Charles Charles Leno coming in here and like being a franchise left tackle or some elite guy. Like it's just going to be the same thing, if not worse. And it's like, now you got Ronnie Stanley. Of course it has a very, has had a very unfortunate career due to injuries and that's nothing against him whatsoever. It's very unfortunate, but it's like, he's got a full off season now of recovery rehab, you know, like progressive, like he's progressing and he's going to be healthier than he has been in the last few years or as healthy as he has been in the last few years. I'm sorry. So, uh, you know, I'm not betting on him to return to an elite form. But at points last season, he was really good. However, at some points, he was really bad. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm a fan. I, I've always liked Ronnie Stanley. We, You know, we used a sixth overall pick on him back then. And uh, obviously, the Ravens are committed to him because they haven't given up on him yet. And uh, I know players love him, of course. He's got a good rap with, you know, our offense and stuff. Um, so I have confidence. Hopefully, he can produce for us this season that a – higher level than he has. Um, but I, I'm not a fan of cutting him either. I don't think there would be any benefit to be to, to it. I'm sorry, to be honest, because it's just, it wouldn't make any sense. And then, you know, if you're drafting a guy round one to be your blindside protector for your franchise quarterback, like, no boy, no, I'm not, I'm good. I'm going to pass on that. I don't, I don't want to shove a guy out there day one to be our blindside protector for our $250 million quarterback. Not happening. Sorry. Yeah, I think so. Stanley as a post June one cut would save fifteen million dollars, eleven point two in dead money, so it would create fifteen million dollars in cap space. Um, it's kind of one of those things that there's a lot of things in life, whether it's you know, whatever politics or whatever. I don't have strong opinions on certain things. This is kind of one of those things. It's like uh-huh. if they were to cut him, 
I'd be like, okay. And if they were to keep him, I'd be like, okay. Like, I don't really know what I would do is what I'm saying. Um, it's like, I don't really have an answer. You know what I mean? Like, I think cutting him, saving 15 million is definitely intriguing, but yeah. having no one at left tackle, like I, with what uh, wrong siren said, I think that cutting Stanley, I don't think they would sign a guy. I think they'd like try to address it in the draft, which is risky. As Dawson said, a uh, rookie left tackle. I think maybe you sign a rookie left sign. You draft a rookie left tackle and then sign a, kind of swing guy to ease him in so it's interesting and like you could argue like we could cut stanley draft a tackle in the first round and like sign hollywood brown back or something like that like it's definitely an interesting thing so here's where i stand i mean it's pretty base it's pretty simple if a guy is available as a left tackle he's clearly not that good because the way teams value left tackles is premium it's your blindside protector for your quarterback in most in most teams so if the dude's available sitting there wow. he's clearly not that good i'm sorry it's just it is what it is a team would not let a really good or elite like great left tackle just leave i mean it is what it is i mean you i i would hope both of you agree with me so it's like in my eyes there would be absolutely no benefit to letting stanley get to the curb and sign a left tackle because if he's sitting there on the open market then he's clearly not that good because if he was, he would be on a team. So, I mean, that's just the way I look at it. Um, like I said, obviously you can draft a really good left tackle um, in the first or second round, of course. But I just – I don't like the odds of putting a left tackle out there day one as a rookie. Because obviously he's going to make rookie mistakes. Stuff's going to happen. And it's like we got a very expensive franchise quarterback. I'm not willing to have a guy out there who's in no disrespect or shade towards him, not ready to do it yet. So, I'm just – that's just how I look at it. So, I mean, I guess – with either decision with keeping Stanley or letting him go, I could find peace with, um, with whatever decision happens. But in, in my eyes, I would probably just keep him. If anything, possibly move on from Morgan Moses. But at the same time, it's like, he's not that bad. Like you could get far worse right tackles than Morgan Moses. Yeah. Like he's pretty, he's durable. He's dependable. Like he, yeah, he makes, you know, bad plays and stuff like all players do, but Every you could get, does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can get far worse um, tackles than the Ravens have right now. I can promise you that. There's teams with far worse situations. And, you know, Morgan Moses, we're not paying that much. So you might as well let his contract, you know, ride out this season because I think this is his last year. You might as well just let him ride it out and finish it. So. So. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. No, Villanueva, man. Oh, my God. Don't speak of that dude's wow. name, bro. Yeah, that's a crazy statement. But I wanted to also mention the departures from the Ravens that aren't necessarily the bigger names, but, I mean, these are guys that we were cheering for all season. Bigger names, Geno Stone, Gus Edwards, like we had mentioned, John Simpson, he went to the Jets, Ronald Darby and DuVernay go to the Jags. Um, is there one guy out of that group that you guys kind of immediately say, we're going to miss him? I would. I'm gonna miss Gus say. Edwards so much. Yeah, that's like obvious. I'm just yeah. gonna miss Gus. I mean, Chargers is it, kind dude. of a surprise for me. I guess with uh, Jim really? Harbaugh and all that makes sense. But Chargers going from Eckler to Gus is gonna be pretty. Than than of course, I say this now after he signed already. But I honest to God, a few days ago, thought I'm like, dude, if Gus leaves Baltimore, I could 100 percent see him end up in LA with Greg Roman. Really? Like I, wow. I say that now, of course, but I swear. That's, that's how a I good thought. point. I forgot. About I was that. like, I was like, dude, he's going to end up in Greg Roman's that. scheme again. If he leaves, because there's already familiarity with him. And Gus was an absolute tank in Greg Roman's scheme. So it's like, and then of course the Harbaugh connection. So I wasn't surprised to see him go to the chargers. However, I was, I mean, of course we knew the imminent Derrick Henry signing was a very good possibility, but seeing that notification of Gus leaving kind of sucked, man, that was probably the one, that hit me the hardest um, because Patrick Queen did, but we knew that was happening. We knew Patrick Queen was leaving to go to Pittsburgh. I mean, it was the inevitable. You can't pay two off-ball linebackers, especially who are at the top of their position, um, you know, both what they want. So yeah, that sucked, but we knew it was happening. We had peace of it happening. Um, but I would say Gus and even John Simpson, I was like, damn, because he had a good season. I mean, he yeah. actually had a pretty good season. And, you know, we took a flyer on him from Vegas, and he was – not that good. And he had a pretty good season in Baltimore. He kind of rejuvenated his career. So happy for the guy. I mean, good for him. Yeah. 
John, John sucked to hear uh, Darby and Duvernay kind of hurt me a little. I, I love Duvernay. I loved him in his time with Baltimore. Um, just a random, amazing return. We're going to miss that. Even though we can make good return guys, I'm just going to miss Duv. It was, it was a name for a while and that's going to suck. But to put all of this in a bigger perspective, the AFC North has had a lot of news going on. Biggest one that I've seen is the one and only Russell Wilson, Seahawk legend with the Broncos. Had a few down years going to the Steelers to compete with Kenny Pickett. I was very surprised by that. And along in the Steelers, Deontay Johnson, their star wide receiver, he gets traded to the Panthers for Dante Jackson. Brad, initial thoughts on either one of those guys? So the Russell Wilson thing. I, I, I was having really bad sleep recently. I went to bed at like 10 and woke up at like nine the next day. So I obviously missed that. It's, it's funny when a signing happens overnight, it's kind of hard for you to, for it to like set in. I just wake up in the morning and I I have a text from my dad and it's like, it was like rust to the Steelers. Wow. I was like, what? I was like, what <laughs> yeah. is going on? Um, but $1 million. I mean, definitely like, it's like kind of like, why would they not do it? I mean, That's I think amazing, I would, yeah. I would rather throw a flyer at Fields because, um, like, there's a chance that he turns into a franchise guy. I don't think Russell Wilson is going to be that anymore. But with the Steelers going nine and eight every year with me at quarterback, I think Russell Wilson will maybe make them like a 10 or 11 win team. Like, he's not great, but he's not like a terrible quarterback. He just gets a lot of hate. Like, he's top 20, maybe top 15. Um, Deontay Johnson was kind of weird. That's not something that any of, I don't know if that was like expected by anyone. Um, Dante Jackson's a solid corner for the Panthers. Um, yes. Both players were in their last year, of their contract. So I guess Steelers figured they needed a corner. Then they wanted more than they wanted Deontay Johnson. Maybe they're a little done with the effort stuff that we see on social media, all that. Don't know if it's blown out of proportion or not, but both definitely very interesting moves. And I think, you know, it's going to be really weird seeing Russell Wilson in a Steelers uniform next year. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's gonna be so weird, dude. And here's my thing: like, it's obviously Russell Wilson's been a you know a really good quarterback over the course of his career, and you know he's you know he's been that guy. But you know in Denver he kind of fell off a little bit, and it was kind of a rough patch for him. Um, but dude, for one million dollars, I mean, why wouldn't you take a flyer on a guy like Russell Wilson? I mean, you'd be stupid not to, especially if he wanted to actually entertain the thought of coming to your team but um you know i i think it helps the steelers man i think honest to god i think they're a pretty i think they're a better team with them and i think that's not something crazy to say but my only thing is you know with arthur smith his expertise is kind of attacking the middle of the field as an offense and russell wilson's never that's never been his yeah that's you know, a good point. his thing like russell like arthur smith's scheme attacks the middle of the field and i russell wilson's never been the guy that you know tears it up at under that. center right you know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. It's going to be a weird fit with that offense to what quarterback he's got. Um, you know, obviously they're going to try their best to make it work, but I, I just thought that was kind of weird. I don't think the fit is quite there. And I don't think it's like, I don't think it's something that like scares me, honestly. I, I don't like, I'm not scared of the Steelers. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think they're a better team. And of course they're going to be, you know, a competitor with Mike Tomlin, the coach. And we all know that, but uh, you know, I don't think it's something where it's like, Oh boy. Like now if like Brad said, if they traded for Justin Fields, I would be having a completely different discussion right now. I would be yeah. like, oh, crap, here we go. Like, that could be something that is scary, you know, for us Ravens fans. But, uh, you know, I'm not shivering over Russell Wilson to the Steelers. I don't think it's anything crazy. And, you know, it's not a franchise quarterback. It's, if anything, he's a bridge quarterback until they eventually find who is going to maybe one day be their franchise quarterback because, uh, you know, the Kenny Pickett experiment obviously didn't go as planned. Yeah. And also to mention with that, I mean – yeah, like you mentioned, Brad, the almost one, I think it was one and a half million dollars for Russell Wilson. Who wouldn't do that? It just seems like a great uh, pickup for them. But to mention other teams, the Bengals have T. Higgins requesting a trade. They traded Joe Mixon to the Texans after they thought they were going to release him, and then they signed Zach Moss. Bengals looking a weird, little weird, but then the Browns trade for Jerry Judy, which was kind of a shocker to me, and then they re-signed Zedarius Smith. Out of those that I just mentioned, T. Higgins, Mixon, Moss, Jerry Judy, which shocked you or surprised you the most, Dawson? 
I would probably have to say Jerry Judy. Um, I would like to sit here and say Zach Moss is like one that scares me or like, you know, like surprise me. But mm-hmm. obviously we saw the report, you know, like the uh, Bengals weren't high on Joe Mixon anymore. And, you know, the future was uncertain and they could be moving on from him. So I kind of like had a thought in the back of my mind, like, OK, it's probably not going to be Joe Mixon next season. They're probably going to attack a running back. Um, I'm glad they didn't target a premier running back who's like fantastic like we did. Uh, but Zach Moss is a good back. No discredit to him whatsoever. He's going to be good in that offense. And uh, But I would probably say Jerry Judy shocked me the most because I, I didn't think Cleveland would make another big-time trade yeah. for a wide receiver. And, dude, it is a great move for them. I'm I'm not going to lie. I think that is a great move for Cleveland. Um, him and Amari share a good pa- a good um, past together. You know, they got a relationship. So And he's a really talented receiver. He's just never been quite in like in a good situation as far as his skill set and talents. Um, Denver was just kind of a disaster. I'm sorry. But, you know, I think in Cleveland, you know, their whole quarterback situation is still kind of shaky because, you know, they need Deshaun to get back to his old form, whether he will or not, is untold. But uh, I think Judy and Amari, man, is a really good wide receiver core, and they even got Elijah Moore. So I think Cleveland's good on receivers, man, and I think Judy is going to step up his game a little bit in Cleveland. I think you're definitely going to see a different type of receiver, and I think you're going to see a receiver who's more determined, motivated, and is utilized a lot more than he was in Denver. Because I don't know why, but Denver never, like, used him. They just – it was a very weird situation. They, like, drafted him so highly, and they just kind of – never used them but like when they did he was good so it was just weird i don't understand the whole uh situation there with denver and then they trade him off for literally nothing cleveland gave up nothing for him so i don't know man props to cleveland's that's a good move for them uh obviously it doesn't make us feel any better about the situation but i think that's the one where when it came across my phone i was like damn really like he's going to cleveland like i didn't I, i thought he was on the move but not to cleveland Brad, what was your most surprising or at least maybe scariest? I kind of like scariest there of the four there. I would say scariest is, I guess, Judy because, I mean, Zach Moss is a good player, but I'm not exactly scared of him. Um, Surprising. I mean, T. Higgins is a little surprising. It's like surprising, but also not because we all knew that they're like probably not going to be able to pay him. And, like, this is probably his last year there if he plays on the tag. Um, and, like, I feel like he's going to end up, like, not getting traded. Like, they're going to figure something out. Um, but I don't know. I think Joe Mixon was a little surprising. Uh, honestly, I think Zach Moss now, maybe a few years ago, not so much. He's not that much of a downgrade from Joe Mixon. He had almost, like, 800 rushing yards last year. And he's, like, a decent receiving back, too. He's with a the Colts. Take. Yeah, he's like. A take. If we didn't sign Derrick Henry, like I was, I'd be like, yeah, Zach Moss is like, oh, fine. I. If we didn't get Henry, if he went somewhere else, like signing Zach Moss for four million a year, I look, you would have been like, okay, yeah, like, this ain't bad. Like I would have, yeah, it. that price, yeah, yeah, I love. But Zach he's Moss probably the only other one that I would have entertained after Henry, and of course all the other top guys. But I think it's a good move for uh, Cincinnati. But I, I do want to say that the T Higgins trade scenario is a little scary, just because whether it's true or not. There's a little bit of skepticism and a little bit of rumors going around that potentially the Bengals could make a move for Justin Jefferson to pair him up with his old teammate at LSU and Jamar Chase. I don't think it's possible and I don't think it's going to happen, but I am saying that there is a little bit of rumors swirling around that it could be happening. And Jamar Chase earlier had a very cryptic tweet on Twitter saying something about you can't make this story up or this story is going to be crazy. And there was absolutely no context to it. So who knows? Probably not true. However, if that does happen, oh boy, that would suck for Ravens fans and everybody yeah. in the NFL. If you somehow paired quite literally the two best receivers in the NFL with freaking Joe, yeah, Burrow, literally, that would just that would be oh god, I would have nightmares every night forever. It would not be fun, and I think we would like immediately shift focus to like, hey, give me a corner. Maybe we go corner for a shot. Oh, like we'd start to... getting scared. Everyone oh. would start getting scared. Um, Richard here asks, what position would you consider priority after picking up King Henry? I got to go align because of the holes at the guard positions, but, uh, wide receiver still there. Uh, corner still there. Dawson, what do you think? See, I, I'm going to go with a wild card, man. I think it's pass rush. Um, obviously receiver, Ooh. cornerback, offensive line. We've discussed all of these, you know, a million times. Of course, I think they're big needs, but I think it's pass rusher, man. Because right now. Think about the Ravens' pass rushers, pass rushers on the roster under contract right now. 
yeah, no bueno. It's not that good. Uh, it's it's scary. So you know, and we could potentially be moving on from Taya soon um, because that's a cap saving, and that whole situation's just been very weird and untold. But I think it has to be pass rusher, and I think the main focus has to be bringing back Jadevian Clowney or Kyle Vanoy, maybe even both. Um, I, I think that's a hundred percent the next move I want by the Ravens is bringing back one of those guys, preferably Jadevian. Uh, but you know, in Jadevian Clowney is probably going to demand like twelve million dollars, which I don't think the Ravens will entertain. But Long story short, I think pass rusher is the next thing the Ravens have to figure out. Yeah, I was going to mention pass rush because did you guys see like Ty Bowser said he's like fully healthy for next season or something like that? Yeah. yeah and like his cap is what, $7 million? Like it's so weird. If if it was just normal, yeah, I have to get surgery. If it was like last September, he's like, yeah, I have to get surgery. I'm out for the year. I'd feel a lot more okay about it. But it was like, why did that happen like that? Like I don't understand it's what was going on. whole season just down the drain. Yeah, and so like, like if if Ty's Bowser is healthy and like we can have like a safe Bowser and Owe as our starting edges, obviously you want to improve on that. But like that would be nice to have. Um, but I don't know. It's gonna be interesting with Bowser now after apparently saying he's gonna be healthy. I, I don't know. I I just think the Ravens are gonna really like that five point five million dollars they're gonna yeah. save if they cut him. I, I just think that's something they're going to need and you know we haven't even mentioned that we signed derrick henry today but there was there's moves that were made you know under the table that had to account for derrick henry getting thrown onto our money yeah like you know there there's restructures cuts extensions there's something that had to happen or is going to happen soon to fit derrick henry under this cap because i don't think the ravens were in a situation where that contract they dished out is you know they were fine so we're going to see the next couple of days there's probably a couple of moves that have been made or are going to be made um you know, maybe one of them's Tyus Bowser leaving. Um, we all love the guy, but of course, last season it was kind of just so weird what happened that we're kind of just like, you know, it's the end of the road. Let's like let's, let's move on. Best of luck to you. I think that's kind of the, how the Ravens feel on it too. Um, it'll be interesting to see though because there's going to be a lot of moves made in the next couple of weeks, and uh, it's it's 100 percent going to change the trajectory of our season. You know, hopefully in a good way. Yeah, and I like this comment here from Wrong Siren: the Broncos fire sale and trading Cortland Sutton to the Ravens. I. That is very factual that the offense would be nasty, but like what they're asking price. Like if we were to throw, you know, third or fourth rounder, I don't really care. I, I think that's going to be better than anyone we get in the draft right now, especially at that position. So is there any, is, are we entertaining that? Like, are we thinking that Denver would be willing to give up someone like that even after giving up Judy? I think, I think after Judy, I was going to say after Judy, probably not. But if the Judy thing never happened, maybe. But like, we need a big receiver. Um, Josh Reynolds is a free agent. I think he's a decent option. Dawson doesn't like it, but like, <laughs> I don't. I feel like Josh Reynolds would be similar to like, and obviously the name is not the same, but like the production to what we got from like Odell last year. <laughs> I think they'd be like similar. Josh Reynolds is like a solid player. Like, I don't know. Denver's just in such a fire state. Like they're just they're so yeah. set behind from what they did to get Russell Wilson that like right now I could see you literally calling on anybody and they would entertain it. I'm not saying they would do it, but they would at least entertain it. And it's like, honest to God, I if they wanted him, I would probably send Bateman to Denver to get Sutton. Just to ease what you're giving up capital wise. You know, they're probably asking for a third round pick, whatever it may be. But if you include Bateman in there, dude, it, wow. you, that capital could drop. And I swear I would. I would. I love the guy, but it's yeah. just, it's one of those situations where it's like, dude, we're in year what now? Like four or whatever. And it's just not working. Yeah. And Wait. it's like, dude, I, I love the guy and I would, I wish he would break out, but it's like, I can't sit here every season and say, this is Bateman's year. Here we go. And it's like, dude, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the road, it's like Denver's would get a guy with huge upside, a change of scenery. We would get that big guy, that big receiver we need, and a guy who's obviously good. Um, man, dude, I would love Cortland Sutton. And uh, if we could, I would send Bateman to him uh, and whatever other capital or whatever they want. But I, I would do it. I, and I think they would entertain that, to be honest with you as well. Wow. Wrong sign. Yeah. Bateman giving him up for Cortland Sutton. I'm not totally sure about that. I love Bateman. He's 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 actually he's kind of what I do too. Weirdly, like... weirdly, he's kind of what Patrick Queen is for you guys. Like I love Bateman. And I really think he has really high potential. It's just hasn't clicked for some reason. It sucks. But he, he's just kind of like I've he's been here since 
I've been really locked in with the Ravens, and it sucks to think about a it world without two games. Him. Yeah, I mean, like there's there's he's a good know, receiver, times, but he's open all the time. He's a oh, good yeah. receiver. Oh yeah. But our quarterback, we just can't. They can't get on the same page, dude. And I think it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, it's just not meant to be. Like it, it just didn't work out here in Baltimore, and he's gonna go elsewhere and turn into a first ballot Hall of Famer like Jerry Rice. That's just how it goes. But it's you know, it's, <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, if, if right now, if you told me we could get Cortland Sutton from Denver for Bateman and I mean, what would it be? A fifth round pick? I don't know. What would they want for him? Maybe. I would send yeah. it. I would do it ten times out of ten. Really? Wow. Wow. Because then you're locked. Because then you're getting Sutton. You're getting Sutton for X amount of years because he's still, you know, really good and he's not super old. You have Zay Flowers, obviously, in a rookie contract. And then say you, you know, Odell is probably out the window. But say you draft a guy round one, or God forbid, sign one of these, you know, mid tier free agents like Brad mentioned, say Josh Reynolds. You'd have Zay Flowers, Cortland Sutton. And then you have the other guy. And it's like, dude, that's a pretty damn good wide receiver core. Like I would say. Like that's an that's plenty enough to win with Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Derek Henry, Keith Mitchell, Lamar, and you know, whatever we do with our offensive line. It's like that's plenty. That's that that's a Super Bowl contending lineup if you need it. And so that's all I'm saying is I love Bateman to death too, Zach. I love the guy. He's obviously a good receiver, but you know, it's just kind of getting to the point where it's like, all right, dude, come on. Like at one point you're gonna have to break out and be that dude, and it's just unfortunately it hasn't happened yet. So all I'm saying is if it helps us get to Cortland Sutton, I'd be all over it. Yeah, I mean, what an off season so far. I mean, just to think about the entire NFL and how much the running back market and and every team and how much they've changed so far. Teams like the Texans and and Bengals and everyone, they're all kind of just morphing. It's it's incredible. It's amazing, and even us getting. Derek Henry, gosh, like the fever dream that we were all wanting actually turns out. Holy crap. I mean, what a start to the offseason. Uh, I can't wait for the draft now. Like, I feel like I'm almost past this now. I'm like, Derek Henry, there oh, it is. No. Over. And now we're next. No. But we're definitely going to keep making moves. I'm so excited to see what. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the podcast. Rate it if you'd like. Subscribe. And we will see you guys on the next edition of Charm City Sideline. Peace, Peace up, see you boys. guys. See you.